everyone. <laughs> oh, there's my grass. Okay, lovely. Right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this, I think this is session 12 of 13, so I can't believe we're here already. Um, I thought it might be nice to start with a little check-in. Tell us a random and juicy fact about yourself, something no one in the group knows. Oh! Um, I felt like because we got this far and we know each other so well now, we're okay to do this. It is anonymous. I don't think there's anything that you lot don't know about me. I'm an open book. <laughs> well, Joe, you'll have to you'll have to surprise us. Mm, I've got to dig deep. I'm having a little think now as well because I don't know my answer to that question. <laughs> I feel like I know everything about you as well. Okay, I've got one. Oh, you've got one. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> it's got to be juicy. Oh, why did I make this so difficult for myself? there you have to submit your answer in order to get uh i don't know what my juicy fact is joe can you what's up me it makes me want to be violent <laughs> <laughs> do you know it's funny though i like watching those um I like on YouTube um, those those people that eat loads of food. I can't think what their name is for that, but I actually can't stand the sound of somebody eating next to me. I'll watch people eat, but in reality, I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm getting a food job. <laughs> oh, see, there's some juicy oh, stuff God. out here. Oh. Ryan Geeks is sweet. Who was on Geeks? Was my school friend. I love Ryan Geeks. <laughs> I love this. Wow. This is I'm amazing. having a McDonald's for lunch because it's fr no calories on a Friday. Love that. <laughs> no way, Nicola. Ryan Giggs was your friend. No. Oh, my God. My bedroom was full of Ryan Giggs posters when I was younger. Oh. <laughs> I brushed my teeth with hot water. Wow. This is I've never now felt to all get together and go out like... <laughs> to a bar and have a chat about this, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Thanks, everyone. I feel like we all know each other more, but also don't. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know who it is in the group, but within this small group, some yeah. of these things are true for people. Yeah. Love it. Oh, thanks, everyone. Thanks. That's just a bit of fun. Um, look, we're here joined by our lovely friend, Rebecca Williams, who's going to talk to us. Oh, I've just got to close my poll down. Um, we're here with Rebecca and we want to talk about AI. Uh, Rebecca's an accountant and bookkeeper. She's using AI in her practice and we want to know what that looks like. But Rebecca, do you want to just start by telling us a bit about your background and what you do? Yeah, sure. Um, so we could be here a while. <laughs> I don't know if grey hairs show up on the cam, but <laughs> I'm now 16 years in the game, um, shall we say, as a bookkeeper and accountant. So started off as a bookkeeper, made my way up, um, worked in practice for a few years and then um, decided after completing my ACA that I had zero commercial knowledge at all. So moved into industry for a while, um, managed a few teams there and the finance functions. Um, and then during lockdown, um, on my own YouTube channel, I, br I brought on quite a few of the lovely ladies from the Six Figure Club talking about how they were running these amazing practices. Um, and I thought, oh my God, why don't I just do this? <laughs> so yeah, I, I started the practice about two and a half years ago. Um, it's a bookkeeping and accountancy firm doing all things like compliance. Um, we also do outsource services like outsource FD services. We do payroll. We do everything under one roof, essentially. Um, and if there's a service that I can't offer, I bring in the right people to provide that offering. So I use a lot of um, external consulting where I need to, essentially. So, yeah, we're um, a one stop shop, you could say. You are a font of all knowledge and you're <laughs> so young and Whenever I have a question, I always go to Rebecca. And Rebecca, when I had my practice, you were part of the team as well because 
I wanted your expertise in my business. Um, on a Friday once, yeah, Rebecca is my hero, Nicholas says. Um, on a Friday once a month in our success lounge, uh, you are also an expert on AML. Um, what, like, you like to go down a rabbit hole and you like to know the ins and outs of a cat's bottom about certain things, don't you? And you you just get something in and you just like you now are the AML expert and you're sitting on panels and everything have you always been like that as a child was you like inquisitive and then didn't let something go until or is this something new as you've got older um, i'll give you two things so i was always a very very shy child always um and i've got three sisters who are a lot louder than i am and i was just always the easy going one going with the flow didn't want to speak up I'd be really nervous in class when you know when they used to read out the register and it got to your name my heart would be like uh. and being Williams I was the very last one at the end of the register so it was awful but I, I was always quite quiet um but what I found in my career very early on and again even through um the, the, when I was um, back at school um I always wanted to learn and I always felt like there was something that I was missing because I was never a fast learner. I was in all the top sets back then, but it took me forever to grasp something that someone else would find really easy. So my long-term memory is amazing, but my short-term memory sucks. So, <laughs> so I've carried that throughout of my career. Um, and so even in the early days, there was always so much information being thrown at you from all aspects. So um you say AML, um, all of the um, IFRS and UK Gap and all these different things. And so I've had to spend a long time sitting down and learning in the way that I learn to understand all of these different aspects. And then one day, I'd say it was about eight years ago, maybe a bit more, I thought, well, if I'm having these issues and these questions, why is nobody else? And then the more people I got to talking to, Oh dear, we've lost Rebecca. Um, I was going to say that Rebecca helps a lot of people. Oh, here you go. The more, the more people you got talking to that were struggling. <laughs> yeah, the, the more people that I, I got talking to, I found that they also had those same questions. So I just decided, okay, well, it's not just me. Um, I'm not, you know, um, the daft one in the room. I will just start looking into these questions because I want to know and help other people understand those in a different way. So that's very much where all of us come from, from day dot, including the AML. It's just because I want to know and other yeah. people want to know. And then you're really passionate about helping people learn it in a way that lands with them. Um, you're very kind, gentle and caring, which is such a lovely, lovely trait um, and, you know, at first when we started running, you know, people worry about AML when you're running a bookkeeping practice because that's the kind of people we are. We are conscientious. We want to do it right. But you don't know what you don't know. And staying, uh, you know, while we're juggling everything else, it can feel overwhelming. So we decided to have a session once a month where it's like an hour and 45 minutes where Rebecca's there. She usually teaches you something to begin with but then you have time to implement what you need to do that month to stay on top and on track um i mean i know that the confidence around aml in our success lounge has grown so much since you've been around there's been a lot less um people worried and scared more people passing their inspections with even still nervous but with a lot more certainty than before. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know how many months you've been running it now, but um, I, I can tell you enjoy it as well. And that's what we need. Yeah. Uh, do you know, I think it's been 11 months now. That's wow. crazy, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. I think the first session was August 23. Um, mm. Yeah, so it'll be, yeah, with July coming up. Yeah. <laughs> 11 months. Um, oh. And... Yeah, it's, it's, that's it for me. Um, I've always thought about, you know, every, every, every day everybody's got the work to do or they've got the family life and, and things come up and the, there's, you know, you just got to run with it. But I try and always look at the bigger picture of things. And 
for me. I get the most enjoyment knowing that if somebody's contacted me or they've watched a video or they've been part of, of the AML um, accountability course, whatever it is, that they're going to go to bed that night and they can sleep a little bit better knowing that, you know, someone's been through that or they've had those thoughts or, ah, OK, well, there's the answer that they couldn't find online because Google's awful when it <laughs> comes to AML. Yeah. So it's that it just gives me yeah um great sense of pride i guess um knowing that i can help people just with that one small area of, of um aml oh i think you give people so much like so much more like than you think you do and i if it's okay i might just share a slide of like how this fits in because if you're mm. thinking about how we support you in the success program um rebecca's aml session is an important part of like, managing your practice i'd say this is one of the biggest worries that we see in the program um so we we obviously teach you the things that you need to do to manage your practice see yourself as the ceo build systems that scale systems like your aml system where you know exactly what you need to do every time you get a new client we talk to you about your app stack but then we also have sessions that happen during the program in the success lounge um, which are our members call where we welcome you and make sure you've got access, you know who we, who's in our team to support you. Joe runs a practice management Q&A every month, but then Rebecca is also there every month with this AML support session. And we've got a whole bank of AML um, trainings uh, and things that we've recorded with you, Rebecca, as well. And I'd say as well, you know, um, that I think the challenge with what we do is we can't give you the advice because we're not your professional body. We're not the person who's regulating this. So what we've always sought to do is make sure there's a safe space to come and ask the questions. Because I think although there are helplines and there's technical support and all those things, I think sometimes people think I better not ring that line because it might flag something, you know. And I think that's why we need to have a safe space where we can have a conversation. Um, so that's why we started to provide that session. And um, yeah, I think we've definitely seen people feeling more comfortable and um, you, you're the person who's made that massive difference, Rebecca. So thank you. Oh. <laughs> you give me too much credit. <laughs> so tell us about AI. So I know you're running a practice, mm. you've got clients. You said to us, I really want to talk about Copilot, Microsoft Copilot. I don't I I don't even use Microsoft these days. So like this is new to me. So tell me like what is that? How did you find out about it? How are you using it? I'd love to know. Yeah, so I've got to I've got to take a step back first because I with my background and with with having been in audit and all the rest of it, um, my my focus is always risk based. So whenever something new is coming into the industry, like um, the likes of AI or other, I immediately think, you know, what risk does that pose to me in my business, and how am I going to mitigate that instantly? That's really nerdy, isn't it? But that's just the way that I think. And um, so when I'm seeing all of this information coming out about AI, I'm thinking, well, firstly, how can I use it? And secondly, you know, what 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 is it all about? And what again, what risks um, do I face in my business with the introduction of AI? And what risks to the industry and all the rest of it? So I started looking into ChatGPT, as everybody does, the learning language model that I know has been spoken about a lot this week. Um, so I'm not going to touch on that heavily, but with the risk factor of that, I wanted to see well. OK, that's open open source data, isn't it? And that's really captured all of this information across Google and all these different search engines for the past six years or so. Um, and it, it's ca just captured that that data. And now if you search for anything in there, you've got to be really careful because somebody else can find that search chat and they can see what you've been searching for. And if you've inputted information into that, again, it's open source. So I was thinking, OK, ChatGBT is great. But I can't have that because I'm dealing with client data. Um, it's sensitive. We've got all of the issues around GDPR. What is the alternative? So I found Microsoft and Microsoft Copilot is the alternative. It's secure. The information that you put into there is not going anywhere. They have um, additional sort of contracts, lawsuits, all the rest of it in the background to state that Copilot is the secure way of using um, these learning language models at the minute. Um, so that was why I headed more towards um, Microsoft Copilot in the first instance. And 
the other element of that is I actually, in the last sort of two weeks or so, um, no, I lie, I tell a lie. The last three weeks, I've actually made the decision to move all of my platform and app stack to be Microsoft focused and Microsoft Copilot heavy as a result, because I've been testing the waters for a good month or so to see what it can do, how it can do it, how it can streamline things, save time, all the rest of it. And you'll be horrified at the level of things it can do to the point that I was this close to hiring an admin assistant and I'm not doing that anymore because Microsoft Copilot can do it for me. Um, all of those tasks that I would have given to somebody else. So it's extremely powerful and it's secure. So that was why Microsoft um, Copilot. But if you want me to start listing what it can do, <laughs> it might be here a while. Um, so I'll give you an example. Yeah, talk to us about that. So um, you just mm. mentioned how you've looked at your work. And we had a good conversation actually yesterday when we were talking to, um, we were talking to Tom and, oh, I'm so embarrassed. I, we, we were talking Chantel, to Chantel. Chantel. And we were talking to Tom and Chantel and we were talking to them about workflows and how they like to write it all out and then sort of lift up and look in and see like, how can I streamline this? But we were saying, but how do you even know what your street, like how do you know it's going <laughs> to streamline? That's one of the mm -hmm. problems, isn't it? So what did that process involve with you reviewing your app set? Because I think that's really, you know, that's something we're talking about all the time. How do we build mm -hmm. that? App set? So how did you do that process? And then where did you know you could use AI? Okay, so I, I'll give you two, two, two sides of that. So my entire family is in the IT space. I am the odd one out. I'm the accountant. <laughs> so there's that. So I'm quite familiar with, with, you know, where to start in terms of like, what am I looking at? Why am I looking at a certain um, piece of software, et cetera? But because I'm also, I'm, I'm very much like um, Emma in a way where I think if I don't have to think, because I, I think everybody's got a thought battery that sort of dwindles during the day. If I don't have to think, I'm not going to. So I literally typed into Microsoft Copilot. How can I use you better? I'm a bookkeeping and accountancy practice. Give me some examples. That was the first point. My next question was, all bookkeeping and accountancy practices worldwide who are using Microsoft Copilot, how are they using it? Just typed it in, got an answer back. Next question, what app stack are they using and for what? Give me an example. And I've actually got an example of that that I'm just gonna to read to you um, because I thought I might get asked this question later down the line of what, what answer did that give? Because Half the time, these learning language models, it's its how what questions you put in and how are you phrasing that to get out the maximum? So what I got from here was, um, so um, bookkeepers and accounts are using Microsoft Copilot to generate edit, edit and format documents quickly. And also in spreadsheets, you can formulize, um, you can add dashboards, et cetera, and make information more insightful with Microsoft Copilot. Um, in terms of email management, again, um, Copilot, um, you can ask Copilot to summarize all of the emails that you've got that week. You can summarize it by contact. You can say, OK, I've got six months worth of um, emails from such a body. Um, I want you to formalize that into one solid word document that summarizes all of all of those emails for me. Or, for instance, have I had an email today from such a body or have I had an email that contains such a thing and it will search for that um in terms of meetings and communication so um in copilot if you've got teams enabled you can actually ask copilot to attend a meeting on your behalf so say you can't go for whatever reason or you've got a team um in the past um definitely when i first started in bookkeeping and accounting it was my job to create an agenda it was my job to take notes and it can do all of that for you, sit in your place. It can tell you what the tone of that meeting was. It can write out a, a script of what was spoken about, the highlights, who was speaking, all the rest of it, any action points, all again, within a lengthy document, if that's what you want, or a shortened document, whatever you want. And it can transcribe that for you. So that's just another example. Um, in terms of um, planning, so, what you can actually ask Copilot to do and something that I'm doing now is, OK, well, do I have any meetings upcoming? And it'll list those meetings for you. It will link to the emails that they relate to. And you can say, 
okay, well, they've got a meeting about such a thing. Is there a document involved? Yes. Okay, so if that's in Word and you've got this lengthy document of things you need to understand prior to the meeting, there's a co-pilot add-on within Word and you can just type away and say, okay, well, can you summarise this, this large document for me in three sentences and can you give me some action points and can you help me plan for this meeting? And co-pilot will do that for you. <laughs> so there's just, just tons of things like that. But also, um, I think one of the things that were that takes a lot of time is, and I know you two talk about this all the time, is in terms of social media management in your business, in your firm, it can be difficult to think about ideas that you want to talk about, topics, um, to do SEO, so search engine optimization, all the rest of it. Um, that comes with it. That takes a long, long time to plan that information out and see, you know, what people are searching for, what people want to learn about. And again, you can get Microsoft Copilot to write something for you. You can ask it to generate images for you. And then there's all types of systems and processes like Zapier or Social Pilot and all the rest of it that you can then batch bulk those, you know, social media posts or videos. And again, streamline that process and save yourself time as a business owner. Um, so yeah, lots and lots and lots of examples. Um, it's, mad. it's mad, isn't it? I, um, I, yesterday in that same conversation, we were talking about uh, someone was working out like, how can I talk about things and then get that turned into social media and then get that automatically posted on social media. Like this is the thing that's gonna, like that is in my future. <laughs> like by the yeah. end, I would have worked out how to do that that's my goal but um I, I think there's just so much when we just think like what are the processes I do at the moment and how can I reduce the human part of it um, mm. like reading the finding the searching that's really interesting um Amanda's put a comment in uh, Rebecca she said I thought someone said and I think she's talking about the session we had with Heather Murray that chat GPT if you change the settings your entries are confidential so I would because it I would never be uploading client information to that is what I would say, Amanda. Um, like you, I wouldn't put emails, personal information. I'd use it to have conversation uh, and people won't be able, like if you're sharing something you've written or something that you have that, that's publicly available, like I don't know all of your LinkedIn posts ever or something, that's fine. That's your information to share, but someone else's information, no. But what you're saying is Copilot is taking information that's already in the microsoft system that you're using and it's it's that data is there and it's connected and then it's on it's sort of like you being able to have a conversation with this tool to say go through this stuff you know and then pull something out for me is that right yes and there's also a little i'd say a common misconception about chat gbt because it is it is open source which means that the information that you put into there can be found. Um, and it's there's, there's all sorts of things going on at the moment looking into, again, how open source that is. And, and if you delete a chat, for example, can that be found later on, all the rest of it. Um, but at the moment, it, it is an open source learning language model. So any information that's put into there, from my perspective, and my understanding, is that it is learning from that information in order to generate new information from all the time. So I don't think it's as secure as Microsoft. Um, and that's why, again, I'm not using ChatGPT for the majority of things. Um, and I definitely don't recommend putting any confidential data into that at all. No. Um, but again, these things are that they're constantly moving. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, I would just be a little bit careful really just again from a risk point of view what what information you're putting into that yeah doesn't be totally that careful content. don't share anything confidential but yeah. there is a setting where you can say don't use my conversation to train the model so um mm -hmm. you can't like if i so for example um when we were we were talking last night about training a chat gpt to speak like us and understand what we know and so i uploaded the book I wrote, Know Your Numbers. So that's my IP. I can share that. 
um, I uploaded the transcript of my book into it. And what we learned from Joe and I had a conversation, I had a conversation and in my mind, Joe was there too, but she wasn't. Uh, had they got a chat with a guy who's like a data scientist or something. And he was talking about how ChatGPT collects information. So if you upload a massive document, what it does is it chunks it. It doesn't actually read the whole thing. It creates little chunks of information that it can then draw on. Like I think it might must be limited by characters or something in terms of it can't take like a 50,000 word thing. It will turn it into like hundreds of words at a time, which is probably why you can't say to ChatGPT, write me a book about this because it always it's always got a character limit, hasn't it? Um, and that information, because I think I've turned the settings off, it shouldn't be available, but I don't really know, which is why I would say that's my IP to share, but someone else's information is absolutely not mine to share. So I wouldn't be putting that in to do research, particularly mm -hmm profession we know we know like we're all super careful aren't we um, yeah but yeah. There's, there's also in, in terms of running the business itself um you're going to be wanting to use some form of ai in your firm to automate and streamline so i think if you've got microsoft copilot in place then you've got access to all of the documents that are saved within onedrive you've got email access you've got contact access so when you're trying to for instance um let's just say within Excel, for example, you, you've you um, got an Excel file that you've been working on or somebody else has been. And there's tons of data, just a data jump. It, it, imagine, you know, the transactional report from zero that you just data dump into there. But you want to slice and dice that information very quickly. But let's just say you're not very good with Excel. You're not used to it. You're a bit unsure. Mm. You can get um, the, the chat co-pilot there to analyze that data for you, create pivot tables, create um, dashboards from that data. You can, again, manipulate the data in a certain way to, sh to, to show information that you can then add further commentary on, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, I think, not just from it being a learning language model in itself, but if you wanna be using it in your practice, I think Copilot for me is very much the way forward because You've got all your data at your fingertips that you can bring up in the click of a button. Mm. And on top of that, you've got that additional sort of analytical review that you can add to, to any aspects of what you're doing. Um, can you and it's all there. Add, so, so if I, you've got a Microsoft account, mm. do you, how do you get Copilot started? And does it turn up in like Outlook like as well and all of yeah. that? How do, you, yeah. how do you get it? Because I've got Microsoft open but there's no copilot i don't think in it so how do you kick it off okay so there is a free version of copilot so if you just type in microsoft copilot into um, a browser you can see that there and it gives you very limited information so where people have been referring to um i think chat gbt the latest model is 4.0 um if you have the free version of the copilot it doesn't have the latest like most up-to-date mm -hmm. um, sort of information there for you to use but if you pay for um, the annual subscription, which I think is about £250 net, um, something like that, then you get Copilot with Outlook, with um, your calendar, with all of your Microsoft products, essentially. Um, so you're right, in, in an email, um, I've got a little button, essentially, that says, as soon as I open up an email, um, a new email, let's just say, it says, do you want to draft with Copilot, yes or no? And I can say, either no not interested just click and start typing away or I can say yeah actually um you know and I can type in and say can you write me an email that says such a thing um to this client let's just say I wanted to list all of my services now this is the beauty of copilot if I have my services listed in a booking form in co in uh, Microsoft or I've got a word document that lists all my services I can say okay based on this file bring up the file and say can you list out my services to a new client as part of a proposal that shows what we do all the rest of it this is the tone of the email this is the information i want you to include generate and it will generate that for you so that's that's again why having everything within microsoft and using ai in that way you've got all of that data that you've built up that historical data in your firm whichever way it is, it could be leads, it could be other, other information there. So you're not having to go back and find that data yourself. It's, it's already there at your fingertips. Um, so you can do that, but also in terms of um, replying to emails, 
you can again use Copilot to reply to an email in a certain way if you'd like to, or if you like what it's generated, say, okay, I like what you've generated here, create a template moving forward that I want to use for all of these types of emails, etc. So it's, um, yeah, incredibly powerful. Mm, that is fascinating. And I, I wonder whether other tools are going to, like, I'm thinking like, is Google going to have something? I don't even know if Google has got something that sits in Google that am I, does it? I don't Bard. Know. What's Bard? Is that is that Google or am I getting that confused? Bard. That's, yeah, I've heard of Bard. Oh, Gemini, Amanda said. Is that Google? Amanda. Hmm. Um, Rita says, will my existing Microsoft 365 have Copilot or do I need to pay extra? So again, there is a free option. So you can use the free version, but with the paid version, the business version, which is, as I say, I think it's about 250 net um, per year, but that gives you access to Copilot with Excel, Word, um, all every single Microsoft um, package that you're using, um, any element of that, it gives you Copilot with that. So again, you can use it for all sorts. And the other thing is, I didn't mention this earlier, but with um if you are generating any kind of social media post with um, AI, I don't know if you've noticed this, but um, I'll, you can kind of tell from a mile off that somebody has used oh, yeah. AI. Um, and I did it a couple of times uh, with ChatGBC about two weeks ago or something like that, um, just to generate a couple of social media posts. And I thought, that's great, but it doesn't sound like me. It's it doesn't, you know, it's not it's not read the way that I type or the read the way that I write out an email, any of that, or how I talk into um voice note. And so it doesn't sound like me. And the difference is that in Copilot, it it's got that data, that historical information. It knows how you talk. So yeah. you can post something different. So today, this morning, I posted on LinkedIn. And if you look at that LinkedIn message, it sounds very much like me. And that's because it technically is me. <laughs> but I'm not sat there typing it out. It's 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 AI generated. But you would not know that that has been completed using Copilot, for example. That's um, really interesting. It's a bit like when we were looking at Delphi clones and mm. I, I, I've uploaded loads of information to clone. I, admittedly, the voice does not sound like my voice, but mm. the way it writes, it says things I say. Like it's like it, it starts sentences in the way I do and is the, uses the same clunky language <laughs> that I might at times. So I think that having one of the things that we can all do to really help ourselves is collect things we've created in the past because if you're going to train an AI tool you you need to have the information about how you speak um so how can you collect that can you get transcripts of meetings that you've had or just record yourself generally chatting so you start to build that yeah. up and I, I think this again was mentioned on one of the the calls this week but I actually use OneNote um within Microsoft so I use Otter AI for transcripts so talking into Otter AI, recording meetings, etc. And that will create um, a document, um, a transcript of, of that meeting. But like with one note, I could be walking around um, the village at lunchtime just talking about, OK, um, I need to do such a thing and um, make sure to make a note of this. And I'm just talking away, saying I need to do X, Y and Z. And all I'll say is, you know, OK, meeting ended or whatever it is press stop, get back to my desk, and I'll say to Copilot, okay, this note that I've taken, can you now create me um, an Excel document with those task lists on? And it can generate that information for you there and then. So there's additional, again, benefits to using um, Copilot wow. over ChatGPT. You've got to it's about learning how to use it. It sounds like you've got to, there is, there's so much it can do, but you're not going to know what it can do until you've learned it. So like with anything, you know, it's just like with traditional software that it takes time to implement, it takes time to learn, um, but it doesn't mean it's not work. You've just got to decide what, you want your processes and things to look like how you want to do it and then find the right tool for you but if someone's using office 365 this does sound like a very good i'm thinking you know i've used office 365 for years even though we use google in 
six figure, I still add all mm. my emails to my Office 365 my Outlook. Yeah. So I'm thinking the amount of emails I've written over time using Outlook, it really will know how and my worst thing in the world is writing emails. I hate it so much. I'm just not <laughs> it. So um, I just procrastinate over it. I don't know why. It's just the thing I do. But I'm yeah. thinking, wow, that would really help me. And the the other thing I'll just mention is um, if anybody uses, um, I think it's Zapier. I always say it the wrong way. Yeah. Zapier or Zapier. Yeah, yeah. Um, but with that, I've I've used that in the business for a long time to get different apps to talk to one another and to make sure that information is sent securely. Now, again, if you are using Microsoft Copilot in any form with the Microsoft packages, you can ask it what apps do you have available within Microsoft that will do this or that will talk to one another in a certain way. And in my experience, at least 90% more of the apps that are in use in Microsoft talk to one another compared to using an external app stack that, that sort of is a little bit broken and having to use Zapier to replace that element of the app stack that doesn't quite talk to another one or doesn't give me that information in the way that I want it to. So you've got that that streamlined process again with using the apps all in one place. Mm, absolutely. Jane just said she can lose so much time writing tricky emails. I'm sure this would help me eventually. And I, I agree. I think it's um, it sounds really good, especially if you really want to utilize. You already spent if you're spending money with 365, then it's about creating some time to really look into it. I mean, how much time do you spend, Rebecca? looking and learning this new software well this is the thing so i'll just say um i i don't like plugging social media but i i did create um, a new tiktok called microsoft ai um tutor where anything that i learn i am literally just posting online ready for anyone else so they don't have to spend the time that i am going in and out mm. i am a complete nerd when it comes to techie things um i like to try things out and that's fun for me that's yeah. you know i put time aside for that fun time um so let me do the hard work for you let me test things out and if i think oh you know that's great i will post it on there and you can go ahead and you can learn from that and, and put that into place um quickly so th there's so much i, I don't know th there's i think at the moment the way that ai is or the big breakthroughs have been the LLMs, so like the chat GPTs, etc. But there's so much more that AI can do other than just simple writing. Um, there's all different elements that are now being brought in. So as and when they do, again, I'm bringing that in and posting about that for you so that you don't have to spend the hours that I am right now <laughs> to get in and out to see what, what works. What's your TikTok channel again? That's Microsoft um, AI Tutor. So it's it's nice. Microsoft underscore AI underscore Tutor. And the seven second videos to 14 second videos just being like, hey, did you know it can do this? Yeah. And this is how easy it is. <laughs> so that's so, a good starting point if someone yeah. wants to trial it out. Um, yes, you're going to have to get TikTok. Zoe and I are over on TikTok as well, trying our best. Um, I love I love TikTok. Um, I think it's like, I think it's overtaken for me for consuming. I consume TikTok more than anything else these days. So yeah, but do, do you remember what I was saying not so long ago about um, the way that TikTok is going um, in terms of over in Asia, it's very much an educational platform and always has been. And that's slowly shifting over this way. So yeah. you'll, you'll probably find that going forward, the dancing videos and all the rest of it might still be there. <laughs> I'm not dancing yeah. um, but the educational piece is going to be massive on TikTok so definitely get on if you're not on there already amazing mm -hmm. amazing uh thank you Rebecca so much so people can follow you obviously on your TikTok channel about Microsoft Copilot um and where else should they connect with you oh I'm everywhere now aren't I <laughs> Mm -hmm. um so on youtube um rebecca's finance tutorials um you'll find all sorts of videos and, and things on there to help you with all aspects of running a business i guess at this point and if you're a student or if there's something you've just forgotten where you think 
I just need a refresher on that. <laughs> you'll, mm. you'll probably find it on there. Um, LinkedIn, I'm on there. Um, you'll find me again. Um, where am I? TikTok, Facebook, um, of course. And in the Six Figure um, Success Lounge, you'll find me there. Um, yeah, you, there's always one way to get a hold of me. <laughs> Oh, it's been really nice to chat to you. Thank you so much, Rebecca. I wonder if um, people can let us know, because it's really helpful for us to have feedback, like what, tell us in the poll here, what is something that you've learned today um, and plan to explore further? Mm. I'm definitely going to go and have a look at, um, what, well, I want, I want to understand whether there's something we're missing out on with Google. But yeah, it does also mean you need to make a decision about your whole business. Like, you know, you were describing about the app stack and the connections. I think we all need to do that. Top down. <laughs> Rebecca is a female Einstein. It's true. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> do you know what it is? I, I think, like, I love what Emma said um, the other day or someone was talking about it, where it's, I guess, in anything that I do in this business now, and it's always been the case, um, really, when I worked um, in different firms, if I had to do something more than, I'd say, three times, I'm, I just think there's a better way of doing it. Yeah. And I'll just take five minutes out. It doesn't have to be a day job where you're looking at everything all at once, because I don't, I also don't think you'll, you'll, you'll get overwhelmed really quickly if you try that. Mm -hmm. Just think, if there's something you're doing right now, whether it's writing the email or it's you having to add, you know, manipulate excel to look the way that you wanted to whatever it is just spend five minutes do a quick tiktok search youtube search whatever it is because everybody's posting all the time um there's free content out there for you to find and just see is there a better way or go and ask chat gbt or copilot is there a better way to do this and it will tell you <laughs> so yeah just do it that way that's how i've done everything amazing oh thank you rebecca thank you everyone as well for being here if you are a vip come and join us at two we've got a separate zoom link we've got a q a session we're going to talk to you about um go into a bit more detail about some of the ai tools we're using um otherwise we'll see you back at eight o'clock we've got a great session about your sales or your discovery call or your sales call whatever you want to call it um so come and join us then at eight o'clock and we'll see you later thanks everyone bye